Martha woke early that morning. There was a lot to be done. Gathering wood for the fire, bread to make, food to prepare, tidying and cleaning up, arranging and organising. After all, hospitality and preparation just doesn't happen. Ah, there's a lot to be done, Mary, said Martha as she saw Mary appear from her room. Yes, said Mary. I will go and gather some wood for the fire. Oh, thank you, Mary, said Martha. Oh, and don't forget to take a bucket. We need some more goat's milk. And, and uh, oh, could you go to the, uh, the veggie patch and get some greens? We need a lot of uh, greens for the, for the salad. Uh, when can we expect them? Mary, said Martha, anxiously. Mary smiled. Yes, Martha, yes. I'm not sure, but ah. Oh, I can't wait to see you, sure, can you, Martha? I can't wait. I just get transfixed in what he says and these words of eternity. I could listen to him all day. Yes, so could I, Mary. But first there's things to do to prepare. Now go quickly. Before we know it, they'll be here. Oh, stoner Roman. How, can, how many do I expect to come? Who knows? This morning... I want to share on a topic that I haven't personally heard for a long time, if any messages at all come to think of it. Maybe it's deemed not too spiritual a subject. Maybe it's taken for granted in applying it. Maybe it's a little bit close to home. Close to home is what we're going to hear about this morning. And it's the practice of hospitality. Mm. You know, meeting over a meal and uh, just sharing together the practice of hospitality. In Romans 12, 13, it says, We are instructed to practice hospitality. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. And the word practice means to do something habitually over and over and regularly. For example, musicians. You know, musicians practice and they rehearse over and over. No doubt, Klaus and Yeti preparing and practicing and just, you know, practicing and, you know, to get comfortable in the fulfillment of things and not to prepare. Now, you've got to excuse my little bit of sense of humor, but this little clip I'm just going to show you is a bit of a comedian clip, but uh, it's, you know, the importance of rehearsal, which I guess is not quite uh, practicing, but have a look at this little clip that's just tickled my fancy. Some of you have seen it before. And this song, this song is called She's Home Again. <laughs> I'd like to do a song for you now, ladies and gentlemen. It's called The Importance of Rehearsal. Thank you. <laughs> the importance of rehearsal cannot be underestimated. Sorry. Estimated <laughs> when the audience have arrived, they deserve to see the best, the best, they deserve to see the best from you, and then you'll understand, under, on, understand, 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 understand that show business is meant, meant to be, hang on, meant to, if you, if you, if you, if. If, if you fail to prepare, and if, if you fail to prepare, you prepare, if you... 
So hospitality is not just about rehearsing, but we're instructed to practice it. <laughs> I often wonder where doctors, you know, they have where doctors reside and they call them medical practices. You know, imagine going to a doctor and you go, oops, oh sorry about that, I'm just practicing, you've just got pneumonia. Don't you mean pneumonia? Oh yeah, sorry, I'm just practicing. Now which way does this, you know, I mean, medical practices, I don't want a doctor practicing on me, but anyway, that's just my sense of humour. So, practice hospitality. In fact, in ancient Near Eastern culture, they placed a high value on hospitality and guests or friends and even strangers were treated with great honour and given the best seat in the house. And as Cathy and I were doing our devotional the other day together, the subject of hospitality popped up and it really just resonated with, with me, particularly on the eve of our third Sunday of the month where we're having people coming into to our homes. And I just really want to sincerely thank you for those of you who are opening up your homes and, and just supporting this initiative. I really do appreciate it. But you know what? Hospitality is something that we can all do, isn't it? Yeah. At some time, in some form or another. And so I just want to unpack the blessings, the rewards, Rewards and some biblical examples of hospitality. And I think there's a reason why the Holy Spirit's really pressing this point at the moment, at this season. Because I really believe that the body of Christ needs each other more than anything right now, don't you? Relationally, we really need to be able to connect together. And is it not written without cause? You know, this scripture, do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing and there's a habit sometimes we can get into a habit of not meeting together and obviously in those early days they had the same challenge but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching And it even says in Hebrews 10.35, For just in a little while, he who is coming will come and not delay. In Jesus, there's a sense, isn't there, that the, the time is getting close even as the day approaches. So we need to encourage one another and meet together and not get into bad habits. In just a little while, he who is coming will come and not delay. But my righteous ones will live by faith. And it goes on to say, which is a little bit sobering, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Now is not the time for us to shrink back. It says, my righteous ones will live by faith, not by fear. And so here is Martha, practicing hospitality, preparing. We can read that in Luke 10, 38. And then... Jesus and his entourage arrives. And I can just imagine, Shalom, Shalom, hello Peter, hello James, hello John, how are you? How was your journey? Oh yes, it was good. Oh, um, where's, where's Martha? Oh Martha, says Jesus, here let me help you with that water. How are you Martha? Oh good, you know Martha being a little bit, uh, you know, running around and so on. How was your journey? Oh yes, it wasn't too bad, except for Peter. Uh, we had to stop a few times. Hey Peter, hey? Had to stop a few, probably a little bit of a rubbly tummy, you know, we had to get off a bit and whoo, you know, had a bit of off fish yesterday, you know. <laughs> you can just imagine it. <laughs> okay everyone, let's sit down, says Jesus. I want to teach you, there's so much to go through. Let's all sit down. So everybody sits down and Mary sits down at Jesus' feet. Martha looks at Mary and points with her eyes. Mm. <laughs> Jesus is sharing these amazing insights. And Martha's there working away and the servant comes up to Martha. And Martha, the fire's gone out. What? There's no wood. What? Ah. <sighs> Martha with a deep sigh. No greens and no goat's milk. Martha quickly hurries out, distracted and somewhat annoyed because she's missing out too. Everyone seems in another world, but there's things to do. Come back. 
Martha looks at Mary. Come back, she mouths. Help me. <laughs> you know that look, blokes? <laughs> but Mary's in La La Land. So Martha thinks. And Jesus pauses and looks kindly at Martha as if to say, is everything okay? And Martha blurts out, embarrassed afterwards, and not wanting to make a scene. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell me, help me to help her. She was a bit embarrassed. She didn't mean to sort of blurt it out in front of everybody. Oh, the joys of hospitality. <laughs> but instead of Jesus saying, yes, this is a good example of do unto others and help others. And, uh, and let's, let's all stop right now. Peter, can you go get some wood? And, and John, could you start milking the, the goat? And let's get the fire going. Let's just stop right here because we need to give and to help each other. But instead of Jesus instructing Martha... And, and, and try to help um, Mary in, in the situation. He goes, Martha, Martha, the Lord said you are worried and upset about many things, but only a few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. In other words, what Jesus is saying, there is a time and there is a place. Is hospitality important? Absolutely. Is preparation important? Yes. Is serving others important? Of course. But Jesus is in the house. So let's not get too hard on poor Martha. She meant well. All you doers. <laughs> and let's get not annoyed at Mary either. I mean, just imagine. So everything stops and Martha sits down. And Jesus finishes speaking some amazing words. Well, the guests now have to be fed. And the fire's gone out and the food hasn't necessarily all been prepared. You know, when Kathy and I have people over, you know, that Sunday mornings in the past, and she makes a big batch of uh, chicken and um, sweet corn soup, and she sends me down to Baker's Delight, and we work out just how many people we need, and ha having over, and how many rolls we'll need, and so on. So I, I duck down there a bit, you know, so many, okay, two per person, da da da, da whatever. So just indulge me here, right? I can imagine Mary and Martha, and the thing's finished, and everybody's gathering around, just chatting, and so on. And he goes up to them and says, go out and uh, pick up some rocks outside. <laughs> Preferably the ones that are in the sun. Uh, maybe mm, 24, about 36, ro uh, 36 uh, um, stones. Hey. And he turns the rocks into bread. Now before you say, where's that in the Bible? Let me quote you. John 21, 25. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them was written down, I suppose the whole world would not have room for the books that were written in them. <laughs> Didn't Satan tempt Jesus and said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread? Maybe. I don't know. But what's the lesson here? Firstly, practice hospitality. Don't get stressed about it. Don't get worried. Jesus is in your house. He's in you. I really believe that the Lord is encouraging us to hospitality, all of us, to open our homes and our hearts. Who knows what might happen? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Let me in. And the second thing in thinking about this that I believe to be, encourage you is to enjoy the rewards. You know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And hospitality can be tiring, particularly as the host. And that's why I love the Bible. I love this word, the word, because obviously back in those days and even as it is today, the Bible, Jesus knows our human nature. Why else would it say in 1 Peter 4, 9, offer hospitality to one another without complaining, <laughs> without grumbling? 
I mean, you know, it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's, there's work involved, making sure the toilet's clean, and, you know, vacuuming, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Oh, but you know, my house is too small, or my unit's not too. It's too small. I don't know. I, you know, what all that kind of stuff. But there are rewards to hospitality. And maybe in our own lives, like hotels, you know, you go past a hotel and there's vacancy, vacancy, vacancy. Let our lives be like a vacancy in regards to that neon sign. Offering a coffee, would you like to come over for a chat? And building a relationship, there's something about coming into someone's place and just hanging out and talking. And then there are other hotels, maybe in our own lives, where it's got no vacancy. We're sending a signal, nah, no vacancy. You know, clothes for business. Maybe like rabbits that scurry out of their burrow, get their food and scamper back. But we miss out. You know, many of us have gone through lots of trials and difficulties and testings. And maybe we don't realise just how much we can relate to other people than we realise. Do you remember Peter? When he went through, Jesus said, you know, saints asked me to sift you like wheat. But when you have come through, strengthen your brothers. And Peter can relate to people and the distress of what it's like you know, to, to deny Jesus and, and to fail. The best way that you can strengthen a brother or a sister is through relationship. And that best way is through hospitality. Albeit a meal or just finger food or cuppa or a chat. And Jesus, as we see in this uh, picture here, is big. He's really big on food and hospitality. And as I was preparing, man, all these examples were coming out that I could, uh, you know, I could pick out from. Jesus can come to your place and mine in many, many different forms. He says, if you give a cup of water in my name, you're doing it as unto me. Wow. I remember the story on the road to Emmaus, you know that story well, where those guys were dejected and, you know, Jesus had just died, one of the biggest events around. It's sort of like, you know, he, he comes alongside these guys and, and uh, it would be like today, um, people say, oh, COVID, COVID, oh, it's just COVID, what's, what's, what's COVID? Like I said, where have you been, Jesus? Or well, not, where have you been, man? I mean, not, they didn't know that it was Jesus, do you know what I mean? Like, and, and he sort of makes out and, and he walks with them and of course they come to the the, the, it's getting dark and they're coming to their destination and they offer him hospitality. Come in. And isn't it interesting that Jesus makes out that he's got to keep going? I find that interesting. He did that again walking on the water and he made out he was going to continue to go. What, what, why is he doing that? Because he's drawing us. He wants us to ask him. He wants us to, to show our, not just our words, but our love and our affirmation. Come in, they said, come in. And of course, Jesus comes in. He breaks the bread again, hospitality, and he's gone. Wow, the reward of having hospitality. And another one that I love the most, one of my favourites, is when Jesus was walking into Jericho and there's Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, who climbs up a tree because he was short. I never thought that Jesus was short, did you? The fact that Zacchaeus had to climb a tree because Jesus was short, that's a joke. <laughs> it doesn't say who was short. <laughs> He climbed the tree because he was short. Well, who was short? I'm only kidding. <laughs> I don't want to mess with your theology. But anyway. <laughs> so here's this tax collector. Man, you know, he was with the sinners. It really ticked off the religious. And then, of course, you know, he stands up and, and repents. You know, you know, if I've given away anything, then, um, you know, I'll, I'll re repay it whatever times, five times or seven times or whatever. Oh, the rewards of hospitality. And then there's another scripture. Paul particularly singles out this guy called Gaius. It says, Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here in Joy sends you his greetings. This guy was known for his hospitality. Wow. 
Imagine, you know, um, sending a, an email or whatever to someone else and, you know, and just say, oh, by the way, remember, you know, Fleurio Family Church, just for their hospitality, just their caring and, and bringing us into their home. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Gaia sends his, his greetings as well. And then the other example I thought of was with Peter, Acts 12.12. 12. You know, when Peter was in prison and the church heard that he had been put in prison, they gathered for a prayer meeting. They gathered instinctively at night to pray. And so, again, there was the logistics and it says that they went to the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark, the aunt of Barnabas. So it's a family thing. So it would have been a big house and so that was a regular thing where they'd meet. And you can imagine them coming in. Hello, Matthias. Hello, come in, come in. Would you like a drink? Oh, thank you so much. Where's your toilet? Oh, okay, it's over there. Um, come in, come in. You know, and, and so they're gathering. Oh, what, being a Peter? James has just been put in prison. They need to pray now. There's hospitality. All of them gathering together. Together. knock 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 at the door whatever hour Rhoda goes to the door and it's Peter no no it has to be his angel I mean that's amazing just the thought you know just his angel you know let's keep praying hallelujah Lord just really, yeah. do you know what I mean there's hospitality and then they, it, you read it and they were over the moon man it's Peter comes in wait, 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 and says shh be quiet let me let me talk let me talk let me tell you what happened the reward that they received through the hospitality of opening Mary's opening up her home and Barnabas Amazing. Could have missed out. Could have, ah, oh, no. Look, what the hell are they going to pray for? Oh, look, no, not at my house. Look, I'm sorry. Look, I'm really busy or whatever. But no, they received a blessing that was known. Peter instinctively says he went to their home. So it was obviously a cultural thing. They knew where they would meet. And seeing Peter released. Who knows what miracle or reward you and I will will encounter when we reach out. And here's another one, Hebrews 13 too. Do not forsake to show hospitality. For by doing so, some people have um, shown hospitality to angels. Wow. Without even knowing it. Who knows? Amazing. You're talking to someone, you're chatting away, you never met them before, and they, you know, just next minute they, would you like tea or coffee? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> just God, this profound word or whatever. All we have been given and resourced for are to be used for His glory. Freely you have received, car house, property, technology, all that you've got. God loves to give it to you. Freely you have received, freely give. We mustn't bury our talents as weak and, oh, I'm not sure, you know, how do you make coffee? I don't drink coffee. Is it one or two? I, I get all that, you know what I mean? And will there be risks? Possibly. Someone might not, you know, brush off their shoes and they'd be mud or, or uh, accidentally drop something. Sorry, I'm sorry. You know, someone may not con con contribute. They just come in and go out or, or some may not even turn up. Or some people might come that we don't normally warm to or they might look different culturally or we might run out of food. Oh, interesting opportunity. <coughs> or wine. I'll oh, just grab me some water, love. Oh, come here. <laughs> Let's see what Jesus will do. <laughs> but Jesus is in your house, in you. All that you have, all that you are, all that you ever be is only because of him. Here's another great example of reward through hospitality. I'll read it to you. Genesis 18, verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great tree of Maim, and he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Oh, hot day. 
sitting there, you know, the shimmering of the, of the, the desert or whatever, he, where he was. And Abraham looked up and there were three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from his entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be bought that you may wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you've come to your servant. Hospitality. Instinctively. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. I love this. Think about this. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. To Sarah. Quick! Make some bread. Get some silas of uh, three silas of the finest flour. In other words, the best. And knead, knead it, and bake some bread. And then he ran to the herd and grabbed the no, not that one, not this one here, a choice calf, and he gave it to his servant who hurried to prepare it. I mean, just think about it. This is not like, uh, quick, just go down to Woolies and we need some chicken and whatever. Like, uh, how are you going, Sarah? How's the... Oh, I'm still going. You know. Okay, guys, won't be long. Uh, we, 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 we were at the house. Oh, they're just killing the... I mean, think about it. Killing the calf. They're like, you know, having to strip it and all this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, how, you know, don't worry, guys. I'm still putting the barbie on. There's a smell of... These guys are sitting here. I mean, you know, what, what guests would... I'm just allowing my imagination. We won't be long, you know, the sun's going down, whatever. You know, these guys are hungry. <laughs> like, we, we just take it for granted, you know. Du, 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 and around we go, oh, here's some, you know, all done, right? But no, he bought some curds and milk and the calf eventually. Huh, finally, you know, uh, how do you like it? Medium rare or, you know, well done. Uh, and he prepared them before them. There it goes, right? Here is the hospitality. And while they ate, he stood near, stood near them under a tree. So they are eating, blessing them. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. Oh, they're in the tent, exhausted from making the bread, probably. <laughs> <laughs> then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, again, in the context of this, they've been waiting, they're old, and, and, and probably you know, feeling like they're giving up, particularly Sarah. And you can read the story. And through that long period of waiting for this promised child, they received it through the act of hospitality. And it says, while they ate, their guests ate, he stood near them under a tree. What's the lesson? When you serve and watch a blessing on others, you will receive a promised reward. <clears throat> they ate, he stood, he served, and eventually a promise. In a year's time, about a year's time, you're going to have your promise, you're going to have your child. So finally, I want to encourage you <laughs> As we may encounter new people into our homes, albeit fellow Christians or new seekers of truth. And yes, you know, we may need to be mindful and discerning of who and what comes into a house. Of course, I understand that. I mean, I remember as a kid, my dad invited an ex-con. He just came out of prison and he came over for a meal. Mum put a lovely meal and so on and he had nowhere to live, nowhere to go. And so Dad said, look, um, we've got a lion shed, you can stay there. But, you know, our, my, my sister was quite nervous, you know, having this guy just come out of prison. And Dad said, look, would you mind if you can stay in the shed, but I need to lock you in because my daughter's concerned and scared. He was, yeah, absolutely, no worries at all. And he did. And that's what happened. And so I get it in regards to we've got to be careful. I, I, I respect that and understand that. But here is an example, here is a very example of taking a risk in Joshua 2. And here is a, a, an unusual act of hospitality that entailed risk for everyone involved. Rahab was a prostitute 
and she hid two spies who were checking out the city to later come in with God's people and destroy it, led by Joshua, ready to invade it. So in they came. And the dilemma for these spies was going into her home that would cause the spies to become ritually unclean. And, you know, it's, God's so amazing. The fact you read in Matthew 1, where Rahab, because of this act of what she did, is named in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Incredible. A prostitute, you know. God's grace. And so the dilemma for these spies, would she be trustworthy? Or would she hand them over to the authorities? And for Rahab, these spies were enemies. Was it safe to invite them into her home? And so it is with hospitality. I mean, think about it. For first timers coming in, those approaching our homes, either, either they're people of peace or they're, you know, they're, they're seekers, you know, there's got to be more to life, or, or they're just total unbelievers and they come in with a friend or whatever, and in they come. And they could ask, is it kind of safe to meet with these people? You know what it's like, you get new people coming in. And, and uh, who are these group of people, Christians? Are they, uh, <coughs> they going to try and sell me Amway or something? You know, they're trying to sell me something? Like, you know, what is this? Out of their comfort zone, just as much as we would be out of our comfort zone if we walked into some dark nightclub. You see the similarity? And what about for us? Oh, welcome, come in, come in. Yeah, yeah, that's good. To... Hey, so, um, so tell me about that ear piercing there and that, oh yeah, okay, and what's that tattoo? Oh, right. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so what else do you do other than mud wrestling? You know, like, uh, okay. But well, you know what I mean? Like, their, their life is completely different to ours. All these awkward moments. And that would have, would have been like in respect to these two cultures with Rahab and these spies coming in. And there's, there's that sort of little bit of unsure kind of tension maybe. And in our devotion, as I was reading it with Kathy, it asked this question and I asked this question of you, how recently have I stepped out of my comfort zone and either offered or received hospitality from those who are different to me? Perhaps those of a different socio-economic bracket, bracket, a different faith, a different race, even those who cheer for a different agenda or worldview. Oh, no, no, that's, not, that's not what I believe. No, 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 no. I mean, you know, the, to be prudent and to be wise and to to, to listen. Yet yeah, it says in the in the word in the New Testament that Jesus loved hanging out with. Sinners, and they loved hanging out with him. He didn't compromise, but he loved them. Because, I, as I shared the other week, the sick need a doctor. And let me conclude. Yes, hospitality can be messy, it can be inconvenient, there's dishes to do, there's cleaning up, there's preparation. There's people who linger longer and linger longer and linger longer. Hey, just a little thing. Have some grace towards your hosts. You know, it's a lot of work. It is. And there's no doubt about it. And just be sensitive to that as well. Lord, help us to practice hospitality. To see the rewards to love others <laughs> and keep us from grumbling for you love a generous and a willing heart. To see the value of others, we pray. Those who need to see you in us that our light would shine so people everywhere may see the good actions and praise God in heaven because of it.
God, give us the courage to take risks in hospitality, to challenge us to expand our circle of those we would normally call our people. Father, help us to practice hospitality as you have shown us by your example. Thank you for coming into our homes, in the home of our lives, and making your residence in us. Now let us do the same and reach out to each other, Lord. Our brothers and sisters and those beyond. Through relationship, through time, and your presence in us in such a simple and profound way through the practice of hospitality. I pray. Amen.